God's Word to uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 6, for our Old Testament reading. Genesis 6, beginning at verse 5, reading from the New King James Version. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to, the, to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. You shall make a window or roof for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from above, and set the door in the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing the flood of waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life, and everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds after their kind, of animals after their kind, and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah did, according to all that God commanded him, so he did. And then for our New Testament reading, the epistle of Hebrews chapter 11, just one verse, you could probably guess which one, uh, verse 7, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. So far, the reading of God's inspired word. It was a dark time in the history of humanity. Like lightning in a dark sky, one man stood out. His name was Noah, which means rest. But he led a busy life as no doubt Russell Crowe will do in the soon-to-be-released movie, Noah. But what made the historic Noah unique? First of all, we read that Noah received grace from God. Noah received grace from God in verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, the fact that Noah received grace from God implies that he needed grace from God. But why? Because he was just as totally depraved as anyone else. We read in verse 5, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. It wasn't that people weren't doing good things. But because they were do, doing it with evil intentions, those good deeds were, in fact, evil deeds. 
And such was the case in the life of Noah. And he must have known it. He must have known that he was as totally depraved as anyone else, that he needed God's grace. And it's important for you, yes, you, that you know that you are in your natural state totally depraved, that you need God's grace. And if you're going to preach it or think you're going to preach it, it's doubly important that you understand the need for grace that you have just as anyone else does. But how did Noah receive God's grace? Hebrews 11.7 makes it very clear. He received it by faith, not by good works for ours are like filthy rags in God's sight. He received grace by faith. And again, what about you? Have you received grace by faith? And it's doubly important for those of you who are going to go out and preach grace through faith that you experience it in your own lives. But why? did Noah receive grace and so many others not receive it? Well, the Bible tells us that Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And there is mystery here, even in that explanation. Why Jacob and not Esau? Scottish theologian Donald MacLeod was once asked why God loves any of us. And he looked out at the congregation and he said, why does God love us? He said, why does my wife love me? There is mystery to the love or mercy of gra or grace of God. And on this first occasion when such a word is used in the scripture, it's important for us to understand that the grace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, comes to us not because of anything in us, but out of that pure mercy and love and grace of God. Shouldn't you be amazed and grateful that you are the object of grace, if you are indeed so? Noah received grace from God. That made him unique. But the text goes on to say, a second reason, give a second reason why Noah was unique. Secondly, Noah came into covenant with God. Noah came into covenant with God, verse 18a. But I will establish my covenant with you. Now, there's several kinds of covenants mentioned in the scriptures. There are covenants between equals, agreements between people to to um, do something or not do something. There are also covenants that are between superiors and inferiors. And that is the kind of covenant that we have here, isn't it? God says, I will establish my covenant with you. It's his covenant which he establishes with Noah. It, you see, this covenant was not an agreement, as unfortunately the children's catechism or certain forms of the children's catechism teaches, teach, but it is a relationship. It is a relationship of love and mercy and grace that God establishes between himself and ourselves, the objects of that mercy and grace and love. Now, we read here in verse 18 that it extends to the whole household in some of its benefits. Verse 18 again, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. They're going to be saved on account of Noah. Later, this covenant is going to be expressed in signs, first of circumcision and then of baptism. But the important thing for us to understand is that Noah had a 
personal relationship with God because he was in covenant with him. That expression that we use, personal relationship, uh, can be misused, as any expression can be. But to a certain extent, it's a good, one, a good expression to use of the relationship between us and God through Jesus Christ because it stresses, whether consciously or unconsciously, the covenantal nature of the God-man relationship that God is pleased to establish. And what about you? Have you come into covenant with God through faith in Jesus Christ? Knowing your need, recognizing that need that you have for grace, have you sought it by faith and developed a deep and meaningful and daily personal relationship with Jesus Christ? A third and final way that Noah is described here as unique is that he was righteous before God. Noah was righteous before God, verses 9 and 22. He was righteous, first of all, compared with others, verse 9a. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. We are all called to be different, to be salt and light in society. And Noah was that. He stood out as different from those around him. And what about you, my friend? When people see you, when they interact with you, when they encounter you, do you stand out to them as someone who's different because you have been with Christ through faith? He was righteous compared to others, but he was also righteous by walking with God, verse 9b. Noah walked with God. In a society where everybody walked everywhere, a reference to walking is a reference to life. <clears throat> Noah conducted his life in such a way that it was always obvious that he was walking with God. In this, he was like his great grandfather Enoch, who is described in chapter 5 of Genesis, verses 22 and 24, as one who walked with God. But remember what our Lord said. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? To walk with God means to submit to him, to submit to his will, to make his will yours, that he is your constant companion. You're not uh, going off into the fields of sin, you're not rushing ahead of him or lagging behind him, but you're with him, submit, submissive to his will. There was once a, a Westminster Seminary student who was coming up for graduation, as some of you are coming up for graduation here, and he said to the Lord over and over again in prayer, Lord, I will go anywhere except California. <laughs> No offense to your Cal you Californians, but the first Orthodox Presbyterian Church of San Francisco is the result of his first effort in the ministry. <laughs> the Lord sent him to California and later again in the course of his long ministry. Thirdly, uh, to be righteous before God means being obedient to God. Verse 22, the chapter ends. Thus Noah did, according to all that God commanded him, so he did. Noah did not change the plan for the ark. He didn't say to God, well, you know, if we added a fourth level, we could get more food in. We wouldn't be quite so hungry during this long time that we would be in the ark. No, he built the ark exactly as God told him to do. And that is what a righteous person does. Our Lord said, John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And the apostle John, who recorded those words, says in his first epistle, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not 
in him. Noah was obedient to God. What about you? Do you pick and choose as if the word of God were a buffet or a smorgasbord? Or do you do what it says? Now, before we finish, it's important for us to remember that Noah was a type of Christ. He saved the world from total destruction, as later chapters show. But Christ did not receive grace from God because he was without sin. And he did not come into covenant with God because he was always in covenant with God as a member of the eternal trinity. Nevertheless, Christ was righteous like Noah compared to others in his generation, walking with God, submissive to his will, being obedient to God's commands. Like Noah before him, Jesus stood alone, blameless in his generation. They were both, you see, like that lightning against the dark sky. Noah's righteousness was imputed to him by faith in Jesus Christ. Christ's righteousness was natural to him. But Noah's righteousness was imputed to him. And so, this text, the word of God to you today, asks you this question. Do you enjoy the righteousness which comes by faith through Jesus Christ? Let's pray together. Lord, we...